Without too much waste of time, Coach, um, welcome to our post-match press conference. Uh, just your thoughts on the 90 minutes, Coach, and then we give you the opportunity to audit the Yeah, um, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I think coming into the game, um, we the tactic was um, to try and force them to go wide, to force Amazulu to play wide. Uh, their strength is from the build-up, with um, especially with Phyllis, he tries to link with the central midfielders. Um, but we knew that we could set pressing traps on Mutuari and uh, Ethan Brooks because uh, they tend to play with a lot of speed uh, when they're in possession, they're not calm. And I think the goal that we scored came from that, that uh, we drove Phyllis inside and he hardly plays the ball long once he comes inside. He always tries to link in the midfield. We applied pressure, we intercepted the ball, we went and scored, which uh, um, shows a good reflection of analysis and the work that we had done in training. Um, when we were leading 1-0, we felt that uh, we, we dropped a notch in terms of our intensity. Yes, we had a, another break with Eva um, going through on goal and uh, them recovering. But uh, we felt that uh, in ball possession, we didn't really retain the ball as much as we wanted to do. We know that Amazulu are a team that likes to play, especially through the central midfielders. And today they came with a, a, a three-man midfield with Mutsuari sitting and Ethan Brooks and uh, Gemma attacking, which, which was not really a surprise because it would have been either that or Extian. And then uh, we had a blow of losing Martin early in the first half, uh, even though we didn't substitute him. But I think the last 25 minutes he was struggling to run because he's got a, he had a groin injury. And then we lost Goodman Mosele in centre midfield. And I think that, that somehow threw us off, um, off balance defensively, off balance in possession, because Goodman helps us to play. Um, Martin is the outlet that we had aimed to use consistently because we knew that Hanamab is going to push a lot. And we expected that, you know. So the crosses that were coming from Hanamab in the first half, for us, it was not too much of a threat, especially with only one striker. Then we come to the change room at half time and we try to, to, to resolve uh, the central midfield. We try to resolve our defensive behavior um, so that we, we don't put ourselves in a situation where we absorb pressure too much. And I felt in the second half we started well. We changed our formation in defense to be 4 for 2 with the 9 and the 10 playing right in front of the central midfielders to force the center backs to go wide, which is what happened in the, in, in, in the first 10, 15 minutes of the first half. But I felt that the, the substitutes that came in, we had Ronaldo coming in on the left, we had uh, Caden Francis coming in on the right. Uh, Ronaldo tended to struggle on, on our left-hand side, which is their right-hand side. And that allowed Joste to come up a lot more, which really gave us problems. But in the midfield, as much as they had the ball, we felt that it was not hurting us because they were playing right in front of our central midfielders. Not really a lot of penetration. But once you don't have the ball for a long time, you, 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 you get fatigued um, physically and you get fatigued mentally. And I think that's what we suffered a little bit today, that we got fatigued. Um, I think the clearest, maybe there are two or three clear chances from crosses, which is always going to be a problem um, if, if you don't stop the cross. And that's what we're struggling with on the right. But other than that, I think the, the substitutions or the injuries that uh, happened with Goodman Mosele, with Craig Martin, really put us off balance. And I felt that Caden Francis off the substitutions, Caden Francis probably did well. Uh, the other substitutes maybe did not sustain the game the way that we wanted. And uh, yeah, to, to concede on a penalty at the end, but you could see the approach of Amazul, that they were really desperate for the win. You know, the last few minutes they threw three strikers in and uh, everything was just being pumped into the box. And it's always going to be difficult to, to deal with those aerial balls. And yeah, we made a mistake maybe on the penalty. Um, I don't want to comment too much about referees and all that thing. So I'll say it's a mistake uh, right on the last minute of the game. So I do feel that um, maybe in one instance, we can say that we're a little bit lucky in terms of two or three chances they had in the second half, but we could have had a draw in this game and uh, it, would have been, it would have been sufficient for us. So congratulations to Amazulu. Um, I think mentally, and physically, they showed that they wanted it more, especially after we scored. And uh, second half, they showed the aggression and they really put us under pressure. It's for us now to go back and uh, regroup. We've got a lot of injuries that we're suffering from. We don't have a natural left back available at the moment. Um, so, yeah, I think we need to regroup, recover a little bit from, from the games that we've played. 
Um, I think we've done well. We can't take this loss today and say that all things are better cheaper. Nobody expected us to have four consecutive wins. Nobody expected cheaper to be number eight in the league with six games to go. So for a team that has always survived relegation on the 30th game of the season, I think we, we, we've really achieved positively. So we must not hit ourselves too hard uh, with this loss. Uh, it does happen and hopefully it becomes a refresher uh, to our minds, uh, both the staff and the players, to say that uh, there is work to be done. But other than that, congratulations to Amazulu and uh, all the best to them uh, for the remainder of the season. Thank you, Coach. Uh, coach, uh, Kula was uh, from the CBC Sports. Uh, coach, uh, you, you spoke about the injuries that you, you, you suffer in this team. How crucial it is for you to have those injuries ahead of a big one in the Lampin Cup and so on? Yeah, it's, uh, it's tough. It's, it's really, really tough. But to be honest, uh, we haven't really thought about the, the Pirates game at the moment. Um, the, the emphasis for us, I think when I first came with Coach Tabo, the, the directive or the objective or the mandate we were given was to lift the game off relegation. And, and then our target was to get over the 30 points mark. Last week I spoke about getting over the 30 points mark against Supersport United. And we achieved that. And, uh, and I said it gives us a breather because we're 20 points uh, away from um, Cape Town space. So yes, these injuries are a concern for the semi-final, but they are a concern for the Swallows game on Wednesday. You know, we lost uh, uh, Malibu Homoduise after the TX Galaxy game. We've got Andy Lembenyane out. We've got Kamuelo Mashlazi out. Today we lose Goodman Mosele. We lose Craig Martin. Um, we've got yellow cards also. Uh, Justice Chabarala got his fourth yellow card today, so he's suspended for the next game. So it's, 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 it's a difficult period for us, but um, our focus needs to be on Swallows. You know, we need to get over the head of Swallows. And then the players that are available for parades, we, we, we have to make a plan. We have to devise a plan with those players. We have to devise tactics uh, to be able to win the game. So I don't think, yes, we are, we, we, it concerns us a lot because, oh, we also lost uh, Majoroho Baraka uh, in central midfield who's consistently played with Goodman Mosele. So the injuries concern us for the Swallows game. The injuries concern us for the Pirates game, for the Pirates game also. So I think the task now, maybe the Solos game gives us an opportunity to see who else could be available going into the Pirates game. But I think the priority for us in the Solos game is to collect points. We, when we got over the 30 point mark, we said to the players, how close can we get to 40 points? And I think that's the target. If we can get into the top eight, I think it would be a massive bonus for us. Um, but I think to be safe from relegation at this time is already an achievement. And um, we would like to get to the final of the NetBank Cup. And you have to be parents to do it. So, tactically, can we do it? Yes, I believe so. Do we have the players that are capable of going out there and competing against parents? Yes, I believe so. Maybe we're lacking a little bit in terms of time because there's a game in between. So, um, we need to manage the squad properly. And we need to look at... Uh, it's a very difficult game to prepare for because our squad is not very big. And when you've got six, seven injuries to starting players, it's going to be very difficult. So... I think as I sit here at the moment, to be honest, I don't have the right answers to say this is what we're going to do against parents. So we need to go back and reflect. But it's an important milestone. It will be an important milestone for Chipper United to reach the NetBank Cup final, uh, to celebrate 10 years in the Eastern Cape. Um, but yeah, we, we need to reflect for the next day or so, and then we can look at the next game in Orlando Pirates. Hey, coach, uh, how uh, coach, just with regards to the game, would you say you are not overly disappointed with the performance of the boys, um, given the fact that you mentioned that the game was lost um, mostly because of the situation that happened with the injuries, um, but having seen your players do well in the last four games with four wins in a row, um, would you say that was more the reason why you guys lost the game, the injuries, um, as opposed to the, the, the performance itself? I, I, think it's a, I think it's a bit of both. Um, I think we are disappointed in losing this game because it, 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 it delays the objective that we want to achieve in terms of reaching the 40 points mark. But at the same time, you know, looking at what these players have achieved uh, over the last four games, over the last six games, we have to give credit to this team. You know, um, we're trying to do the best with what we have with the players. 
But when we've got six, Malibu Akumudisa is a starting left back, um, uh, Goodman Musele is a starting midfielder, uh, Baraka is a starting midfielder, Martin is a starting winger, Mashati is a starting winger. When you lose those players, it does affect us. So we are disappointed on the loss, but um, weighing it against what we've achieved so far, I think we are well ahead of, of what we wanted to achieve. Um, so we, we need not be too hard, but we need to reflect on the players that performed and the players that did not perform so that we can consistently put the pressure on the players that are not performing to lift their game up. Because when we're in a situation like this, then there's a demand on the guys that have not been playing regularly, the guys that have not been performing to lift their game. And I think Caden Francis lifted his hand when he came on today, so credit to the young boy for that. Um, other than that, I think the other guys struggled a little bit, even Aya, Ayabulela, and sadly we had to take him out because he's struggling a little bit with his hamstring also. So we, we have to take that a little bit as the coaches, that may be a mistake uh, to put him in. But we felt that we, we were in the game enough to put him in. So it's a bit of both. We're a little bit disappointed, but uh, we, it's not the worst result for us this season. We need to look ahead. Uh, we've got, uh, I think, five league games to play, 15 points available. And, um, you know, we eight points away from 40 points. So is it achievable? Yes, it's still achievable. Is the top eight achievable as a bonus? Yes, the top eight is achievable as a bonus. So we look ahead to the games and uh, we just have to focus on the guys that are available and try to lift them up to reach the level of the players that uh, has been achieved in the last few games. Good afternoon, coach. Three, the lady. Three, the lady. Good afternoon, coach. Afternoon, uh, this is Big Mike from Vum FM and Marawa Sports Worldwide. Uh, coach, I, I heard that you don't want to talk about uh, referees. We, we respect it. Uh, but now, and I also heard you mention that um, I think the penalty, you are noting the penalty, uh, it was because of the mistake. So I just want to know exactly what is that mistake uh, that you think it led to the penalty? Um, from where I was sitting, uh, it, look, it looked like our defender, Tabo Mokele, possibly made a wrong decision. Um, but I also have a feeling that the striker bought it because uh, he really went down like a sack of potatoes. I don't think Tabo didn't really tackle but was there contact? I think Tabo was running behind him and the striker stopped and there was contact and he fell and the referee blew for the penalty. So I would say the mistake is maybe Tabo should have kept maybe a little bit of a distance with the, uh, with the striker. But when a game is like this, strikers are going to look for them. Uh, they're going to dive, they're going to do all these things. So um, yeah, we don't want to be too hard. It's a bad decision that uh, he made in that instant. Is it a penalty? I don't know. You know, maybe it is, maybe it's not, but I think that's neither here nor there. Uh, Amazulu put us under a lot of pressure, and when you're under pressure and you're defending in your box too much, to some extent, maybe you're bound to, to, to cause penalties, or maybe to some extent, the referee is bound to make a mistake. So he's, he's a good referee, he's always done well in, in all the games that he's left for us, and I think other games as well. So uh, if it's a mistake on either side, it's okay, we accept it and we move on. Coach, I know you've already spoken about Musele and he's one of your key players. Have you maybe um, got a chance to check on how bad his, his injury and his leg when he was stretched out? Um, unfortunately, not yet, but it, it really looks bad from, from the moment that he went down. So uh, after this press conference, I think that's the first question I need to ask the medical staff. Um, yeah, we cross our fingers and we hope that at least he's going to be available for one of the two games this week. We've got a tough schedule ahead of us. You know, we play Solos on Wednesday, we play Pirates on Saturday in the semi-final, we play Pirates on Wednesday in the league, and then we're back here for Golden Arrows. So we really, really need our key players to be available. So yeah, we'll find out after this press conference. But uh, we are, I am really, really concerned, and we are concerned about uh, his injury because it didn't look good at all. Uh, Coach, uh Looking at uh, your record as a coach, uh, you started with the likes of Coach Peter Musman and you developed some quality players for the PSN. And this is the first time you get an opportunity to coach in the DSB as a head coach. Uh, how does it feel for you to get this recognition finally after what you've done in South African football? Yeah, I, 
always get asked this question. <laughs> I think, uh, firstly, I've really got to be thankful to the chairman of uh, Chipa United, uh, Mr. Chipa Mbengesi, uh, to the executive director, Lukanyo Mzizi, to the GM, Sandy Mbengesi, and to the people that have actually spoken to the chairman to say that, uh, try out this coach, you know. Um, as you say, uh, I think I've done a lot of work in youth football in South Africa, but I've also done a lot of work in the PSL. I worked with Pizzo as his assistant coach. I worked with Kevin Johnson, Stuart Baxter. I've worked in the national teams at AFCON tournaments, uh, Olympics, uh, Bafana Bafana. So from a knowledge and an experience perspective, I think uh, uh, without being arrogant or anything, I, I consider myself to be a humble person when it comes to those things. So without being arrogant or anything, I think one is equivalent to many, many other coaches that have had the opportunity. Um, uh, the chairman of uh, uh, Pretoria Kellys maybe also needs to be given credit, credit for giving me an opportunity when I left Supersport United. So it does feel good to, to have this opportunity and uh, hopefully one can sustain it. Uh, and yes, we've had a good start with Chipa United. God sometimes places you in environments where the least is expected. And uh, that is what has happened with Chipa. So I'm, I'm really, really grateful to the chairman. I'm grateful to the almighty God. To uh, I'm, I'm a very traditional man. I'm grateful to the ancestors uh, for this opportunity. And, and I pray every day and I hope that uh, what God wants to show through me, uh, what I've been armed with for the last 25 years, um, I can show with the players that I work with. So I believe this is a stepping stone for greater things to happen. Yes, there are challenges that we're going to meet on the way, but I'm really sincerely, sincerely grateful for this opportunity. And I hope, I'm still learning also. With 25 years experience, I'm still learning. And I'm going to learn more in the PSL. The PSL is very, very different. It's developing every year. So I hope that uh, I can be one of the excelling coaches. I can be counted in, in the mold of uh, the Pizzo Mosimanes, the Stuart Baxters, the Gavin Hunts, um, the Rulani Mukwenas. Uh, but to do that, one needs to stay rooted, keep working, keep learning, stay humble, and, uh, and know your place. So I'm grateful to Chipa United, I'm grateful to the chairman Chipa Bengesi, and hopefully it opens the eyes of, of, of all the other chairmen in the league that football is evolving. Uh, a lot of teams are going for coaches that have got a youth experience, because the, the economy, the, the, the numbers, the money that for, for transfers is so exorbitant that you really need to develop your own players. That's why football is going globally. So, um, um, yeah, I'm grateful for the opportunity and uh, long may it be for myself and many other young coaches out there that have the knowledge, that have experience and that have put in the work. So thank you very much to the people that have believed in me and the people that continue to believe me. Um, and give the opportunity. And thanks to the players also, because without them, we don't shine. So thanks to the players at Chippa United and how they've received us. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Coach. Uh, thank you very much.